Well, don't call it a hoot nanny, because this is a jamboree. <laughs> Why do I picture Cousin Eddie from the Christmas Vacation movies when I say that? Regardless, uh, coming in, it's about 34,200 miles, 881 hours on the generator. Uh, this is a family bunk model Class C coming in here at Halet RV. You see the double windows on the door side slide kind of giving that away. Overall, I'd say it's in pretty fair condition. The previous owners used it a lot. So it shows a couple signs of wear and tear. Overall though, not too bad. I'm gonna show you where there's a couple little hitches in the giddy up. Um, they did something like 50 states in three years or something like that. Like they really, they got around folks. This thing has seen some sights. So if we rate this thing on a scale from one to 10, where 10 is brand new off the showroom floor, and one means the axles just gave out and you can't even drag it to a junkyard, I'd say it's, it's about a six. It's a little bit, I think, above average for its model year. It, it looks about the way it should. There's, again, there's a couple glitches. I'm going to point those out as we go. But overall, it doesn't show some major signs of use and abuse. It looks like there were just a couple incidentals that took place during the use of this RV. But, you know, people often mistake how many miles are on a motorhome for how much it's been used. Because the thing is, the mileage typically does not accurately reflect the use of a motorhome. Because typically, a motorhome gets driven somewhere, it gets parked, it gets left, and that's the end of it. Well, uh, you know, in the meantime, it's getting used like crazy. This one was used a lot. It doesn't really show it. There's a couple spots. Again, I will always be as ultra fair as I can, where people slid in and out of the dinette right here. So yeah, there's a little wear and tear spot, kind of like the armrest of my car has some wear and tear on it after a few years. They spent about, what, a couple years in this thing, virtually full-timing, effectively, traveling a lot. Uh, it, it does not show hard use. There's, an, there's a little thing outside with the power step. The power step's missing, and I'll give you some details on that. But, uh, I mean, again, that's just one of those oops things that happens from driving a bunch, and it, it's a bummer, but it took place. Now, this has theater seating. This is what the view is from the theater seat right here, because the TV doesn't pivot around a lot, but it doesn't need to. It pivots around just enough to face the theater seating, and actually, the TV can pivot a little bit more than what we're looking at right here. If you notice, if you really, really, really want to have an absolute no neck wrecker entertainment center that is not bad but what i love about this again this is a family model you're sitting right here you're watching the family have breakfast or play parcheesi i grew up playing parcheesi does anybody still play parcheesi i used to be really really good at that game even as a little kid i couldn't even tell you the rules anymore i have no idea how that game even works at this point <laughs> Look at the thickness of the roof of this thing, too. That's one of the reasons I like skylights. Let me get you up in here so the light interchanges. Look at how thick that is. That's a nice, thick chunk of a laminated roof. Um, there's a couple little things like these air vents can be closed and turned individually. It looks like a couple little fins on a few of these maybe got plucked out over time, maybe got hung up, popped out. I don't know. But again, that's, that's just not big stuff in my view. You know, if, if you're looking at it, by and large, everything looks pretty good. I don't see a lot of scars and mars and scabs. I don't see where the kids kicked the upper overhead bunk here into Bolivian or anything like that. Entertainment center up here, there's actually a, a little DVD player in that slot down below. If you want to throw a Blu-ray or something in, you could. Now, it is a double privacy curtain, but I like how uh, they both slide out of the way. So if you want to have viewing of the TV without the curtain in front of it, because, you know, that's stupid, you can. We're on the Ford uh, E450 chassis right here which means this should have a, I believe, 7.3 liter Triton V10 power plant, which, uh, geez, the most common uh, Class C chassis, like in the history of Class C chassis. Got that integrated kind of rear view camera infotainment navigation unit right there. That being said, those require manual updates. I'd be shocked if that's actually up to date. I could be wrong. I GPS everything on my phone because my phone stays auto updated all the time. Heated power side mirrors, by the way. That's a nice little touch right there. Flipping around the other direction again, you can see all the shine on the cabinetry. Like, it's a, it's a nice rig. Oh, I like that lower accent light below the kitchen right there. That is a great little uh, nighttime runner light. If somebody is sleeping on that overhead cabin, they need to see their way to the uh, bathroom, or if you want to wake up at night and sneak over to that refrigerator over there to get some leftovers, you can. So this is a middle kitchen layout. Part of the kitchen is in the slide. 
part of the kitchen is actually by the door. It's a walk through middle kitchen, which is a very space efficient design that I'm surprised we don't see more of, like maybe in the towable RV industry. I wanna open this up, give you a look here around everything. Notice that convection microwave oven, super, super clean as well. And that convection will let you do some baking since we obviously don't have a traditional oven down here. I was hoping for space for a wastebasket below the sink. Obviously you don't see one of those there, but overall I'm pretty happy with the storage as it is. Now I want to make note of this refrigerator over here because on my new RV tours, you see me talking all the time. You see a fridge like that and you're like, ooh, that's one of those new 12 volt fridges. This is not. That is a 110 fridge. So uh, basically it's running off the inverter of the RV. I feel that is less problematic in a motorized RV versus a towable because you have a superior suspension system here since this is designed for passenger ride and not cargo ride. Um, not to mention with a built-in generator, you have more reliable power sourcing. Now over here, this is the uh, the middle bunk right here. and. What I kind of thought about this, it, it is not built with like a factory conversion, but if you wanted to like remove that upper bunk, maybe create like a small little office desk space or like a virtual walk-in closet, I have seen versions of this floor plan with exactly that done previously. Sliding pocket privacy door here as well uh, can help partition off the sleeping spaces so we're not like looking at one another when we're sleeping, which is weird. <clears throat> Although, you know, when my kid has a, a bad dream it takes her two or three days to like want to go to bed uh by herself again maybe being this close would actually help alleviate some of that i, I don't know um over here across from that now this is all still part of the slide this is a rear super slide where you have the uh bedroom entertainment and all that storage space built right in let me open that up and give you a little bit of a uh, a look at it here because you can see you got some hanging storage and some really good dresser space that with the kids back here is going to be something you really, really appreciate. Now, the one thing you haven't really seen so far, and I'm trying not to make you motion sick and turn very slowly here, is a pantry. And in a weird way, that double cabinet right here, I think you could consider the pantry. It's got some adjustable shelves. You can pack a lot of mac and cheese in there, but notice the power outlets. If you need to make this like a little device charging station right across from the kiddos, you could. I. I don't know. I think that you could take these out. It wouldn't be hard to put in some kind of small television and make a little bunk room entertainment space for rainy days over here. I'm just, you know, it's an RV that it's set up good right now. I think that it's something that could definitely be converted around for a couple different purposes. It just depends on exactly what you're doing. Ooh, little details like this, that little toe kick. So you can actually belly right up to the uh, bathroom sink and some good counter space in there. You know, there's some good things going on in here. Um, you know, little details too, like a towel bar. That is a, a often overlooked, very handy detail uh, in an RV. Just a place to put a towel after you get out of the shower over here. Now this is all well and good, but the question then begs, what can we do with this thing with the slides closed in travel mode? And one last quick look at her here in what I call travel mode with the slide outs closed going down the road, this is how she's gonna look. Now, motorhomes as compared to towable RVs, they usually have to be pretty travel mode friendly because you have the ability and sometimes the need to access the cabin in transit. So if you wanna hop up, you wanna hit that fridge, grab yourself a little, you know, in motion Sprite or whatever you like to drink on the road, I don't know. Like I, I tend to drink a lot of Mountain Dew. When I'm on the road, for some reason, I, I like Sprite. I don't know, it's just this weird thing. Probably because uh, so, you know, Coke products are easier to get than Pepsi products in some places. Regardless, I'm not partial one way or the other. Now, obviously, you're not walking around that bad, but you can get to it. If you're going to make an overnight stop and you can't open the slides, you'll make it work. And, of course, you can get to the bathroom here. It takes a little bit more time to, you know, close things uh, up and, and show you around like this. Hope you appreciate the extra effort. If so, please take just a quick second, like the video, click that subscribe button. Let's hop outside. Now, as you step out the door, this is our primary patio space here. And one of the things I like is how this does have separate zone entertainment, inside and outside, all separate entertainment out here. And I don't like, I don't go camping personally to just sit there and watch a lot of TV. One thing I do like about that though, I like to find a local radio station or a local TV station where I can kind of tune into like what's going on in the local neighborhood. Are there any sort of events? Is there a festival? Is there something cool and different that I can't see at home that I get to see here? That's what I like those for. I kind of like AM radio. 
you know? I'm a little young for AM radio, but what I mean by that is just having some background noise out there. Now we have run this through the uh, cleaning shop. We did shine up the tires, but as you can see, there's no weather checking, dry rotting, all the tires look good. Now I told you, I'll, I'll be totally clear with you and show you where there's a couple hitches in the giddy up. You don't have to worry about the power step failing, ladies and gentlemen, because unfortunately it, uh, it got smashed. <laughs> Folks went over something, speed bump, uh, curb, I, I, I don't know. I don't think they, they did anything off-roady crazy or anything. But unfortunately, that single step out power step right there uh, is no longer with us. Could it be fixed? Could it be replaced? Sure. But it's a fairly costly replacement considering it's not real hard to just step up into the coach as it is because it's only a single power step. Um, now, if you've got little kids, if that's a little bit much for you, if you've got a bad knee or something like that, and you're like, I'm not doing that, we can either get you a little portable step that you can set out or... We could look into uh, uh, getting a quote on cost replacing that. You know, whatever works for you guys. You let us know what you need and we can make it happen. Um, see the uh, slide awnings on there, keeping the uh, the weather, the sunshine, and the sticks and, and twigs off the top of the slides here. You can hear the generator running most likely. Even uh, here, let me quit talking for a second. I know that's, that's a rare thing. I tend to talk a lot. Now we will go back through in just a second. I will get all this storage stuff opened up for you for now. Uh, I'm just gonna keep on making a pass. It's a little bit windy and the doors aren't wanting to cooperate with me. So I'll, again, I'll get you that stuff. Overall, I gotta say, like, the skin looks pretty gleamy. Uh, we are, let's see, this is the, with the chassis this is on, it should have a 5,000 pound tow rating. So if you got like a little chase car or a boat enclosed trailer, you know, if you're gonna do some dirt biking, actually, yeah, you got kids who are doing dirt biking, this would be an amazing little portable home base. Now, the one thing you're not really seeing is the awning. And again, I believe in total transparency. So here's what's the deal, the story. I didn't know if I wanted to say story or deal there. So I, instead I just got like <laughs> And I did want you to get a good look at the awning space over here. Also, I, I have tried to shoot you straight so far. I'm not gonna start changing that now. There are two small rips in the awning. This is an armless awning basically where it doesn't have a head knocker that sticks down. You see that it has uh, where the, the bend points are has kind of caught the awning uh, a couple times over time. It sounds very rinky-dink, but frankly, just uh, some uh, really good like gorilla tape on those things. You can seam that back together and basically you'd never notice that that is a super low dollar solution, way, way cheaper than replacing an entire awning fabric. Now, you may also notice how I have the slide closed. This awning does go right over that slide out. And it is not because I'm trying to trick you into thinking that it has more patio space than it actually does. There's a very good reason for it. Once again, my motivation is to do nothing but shoot you straight. And I really do hope you appreciate that kind of transparency and candor. My goal is to make sure that when you come to take this RV home, you really know exactly what you're getting into. I don't want you taking it home being like, I wish they would have told me that. They had to have known that. Those suckers lied to me. That is not my goal at Halid RV. So what's going on here is on the front of that awning arm, there is a little lock for that slide awning to kind of retract or not retract. It sticks up a little bit and it catches the lip of this awning when it comes out. Now, you can very easily circumvent this by opening the awning with the slide closed like I've done here. I think you could probably also do something, again, kind of rinky dink and low tech, just take a broom and kind of push it up over that nudge a little bit and then you're gonna be fine. 
it doesn't actually connect with the awning fabric. It's just that little hook uh, of the enclosure of the awning uh, that it touches. I'm not super enthused by any of this. I don't believe there's anything wrong with the awning. I think it was actually a design oversight from the manufacturer from the build level. But whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it got here, it's here. And I'm always going to do my best to make sure you know beyond a shadow of a doubt we are going to shoot you straight here at Halid RV. So maybe it's a big deal to you. Maybe it's not. We are actually going to have our service team double check it to see if that is the intention or not. Again, I suspect that it was probably just a design engineering oversight. But that's the facts, Jack. <laughs> Hope you appreciate the transparency. If you do, hit the subscribe button and let's get back into it because there's plenty good more to come. What I actually found very interesting about it is the mounting location of the awning. That is a very atypical awning install. And it, it allowed them to basically put a maximum height uh, slide wall on there. Now, what's really kind of wacky, I looked at this and I went, oh, because when we go on the other side of the RV, if you look up at that top level, you'll see what looks to be exactly the same kind of hardware. It's actually only there visibly. The manufacturer made it look symmetrical left side to right side just to kind of complete the visual. A little unconventional, but I, I get it. You know, I get it. And I tell you what, I am glad I got up here. The seals look really good. Actually, the seals look like they were touched up recently. And if you look, you can actually see where they scrubbed around the fixtures before they did some touch-ups, which is exactly what you're supposed to do, which is unfortunately not what a lot of people do. A lot of people will actually just put new sealant on top of dirty old sealant. It doesn't get a good seal. And then they're like, I don't know why it leaks. This camper is junk. No, it's not junk. You just didn't do it right. This, yeah, it looks pretty good. Actually, it, the roof looks really good. And I hope you appreciate all the information today, whether it's closing the slides, travel mode, the generator, getting you up on the roof. We're trying to do the best we can to give you some, some a really good estimation of what this RV is, what it isn't. That's why we've shown you where it's good and maybe sometimes where it's not good to present it fairly so that you know you can buy with confidence from Halid RV because we always try to conduct ourselves with decency and integrity. Now, I've gone through this thing pretty quickly today also. So if there are some extra additional questions, you got some fine tooth comb things you need to flow through, give our team a call. We need to come out here with a tape measure and check something. You need, you need to come take a test drive? Frankly, I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't buy something like this without taking it for a drive first. Give us a call. Let's schedule something like that. Let's make this happen. So when you're ready, we're ready. So if you appreciate all the info, hit the like button on the video, subscribe and follow along. And as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Don't call it a hoot nanny. Don't. Unless you buy it, then call it whatever you want.